Welcome. Scott here. Here is a quick boss guide for the upcoming Lavinia Plus event, intersecting Will's parted hopes. The featured units are Machina from Final Fantasy Type-0, Snow from Final Fantasy 13, Lion from Final Fantasy 11 and Realm from Final Fantasy 6. This raid event also marks the debut of Snow's LD. We will be fighting the Tyrant which has 22 million HP. The Tyrant can summon a Centurion Blade which has 3 million HP to assist it in the battle. The turn requirement is 55. The HP requirements is 10,000. Before I continue further, here is a small disclaimer clause for the video. The guide is written based on the time that the event was released for the Japanese version. Please do note that it is possible that the boss fight mechanics might differ when the actual event is released in global. Firstly, let's go through the Lufania Plus Orb conditions. The Lufania Plus Orb will activate at the start of the fight and it is a non-cancellable orb. The orb has two conditions that you can fulfill to uptick it. For the first condition, you need to deal ice elemental damage. For the second condition, you need to give boss turns and receive reduced brave damage from its attacks. There are a lot of units that offers brave damage mitigation. You can reduce brave damage with a buff or using brave shields. They are Snow, Orin, Warrior of Light, Core, Gladiolus, Selfie, Nine, Zack, Bash, Hope and Beatrix. You can freeze the orb when dealing ice elemental damage. Examples of ice damage dealers are Karaseme, Celis, Onion Knight, Palem, Lon and Ren and Vaughn. Karaseme, Onion Knight, and Celis can enchant the party to deal ice damage. Like Snow, Celis is another tank that deals ice elemental damage. Now let's proceed with some party setup recommendations. Recommended Calls Abilities to ensure that you are able to constantly break the boss, it is important to inflict defense down debuffs. Example of calls abilities that inflict defense down calls are Ferris, Jack, and Titus. As the boss has a huge amount of HP, HP damage up debuff calls like Karaseme, Gabrin, Ignis, and Maria are useful. Although a bit trickier to use, aura type HP damage up calls like Queen and Kimari are also viable. As mentioned in the previous slide, you need to have either Brave Damage Mitigation Up or Ice Enchant Call to handle the orb. Karaseme provides party-wide Ice Enchant for 3 turns while Cater provides 4 turn Ice Enchant for the Caller unit. For Brave Damage Mitigation Calls, you can consider using Hope or Gladiolus. Ursula the upcoming unit can also provide party-wide Break Immunity which helps to avoid breaks. That makes it be very useful to handle the boss mechanics. Next, I will be covering units that will be useful to handle the fight mechanics. Like other Lufania Plus events, it is always recommended to bring supports for their aura and buffs. They are Purim, Setzer, Agrias, Keitsa, Ishtala, Bards, Lena and Selfie. As the boss can gain tremendous amounts of brave and if you are playing the non-delay game, Damage mitigation is a must. Options include Snow, Core, Gladiolus, Warrior of Light, Orin, Zack, Nine and Beatrix. For damage dealers, you can consider the following units, Machina, Titus, Tira, Cloud of Darkness, Lon and Ren, Shantato, Chaos, Bane, Kane, Ace, Lion, Shelka, Tifa, Jegran, and Garland. The boss will trigger an instant follow-up AoE HP attack if it breaks you with its recast ability. Units that have break immunity prevention are very useful here. They are Yang, Von, Galov, Kais, and Kor. The next event unit, Ursula also has break immunity. She will be useful for this fight as well. Generally, you will be safe to prevent breaks as long as your party member's individual brave is at least 30k with brave damage damage mitigation up. Lowering the boss attack stats with attack down debuffs will also help in that aspect. If you deploy an ice enchanter or using Karaseme ice enchant call, you can cheese the fight with the infamous Adaroth or Sidma combos.
On the screen, you will see a timeline showing the HP thresholds triggers that you need to watch out for. Other than the standard Lavinia plus aura boosts, the boss will auto summon the Centurion blade to the battlefield when its HP deplete to 89%. The blade has 3 million HP. It will self-destruct after it uses triple cut plus thus engaging the disarmament phase. After that, the tyrant boss will resummon a replacement blade on its fourth turn. The boss starts off with a 50% filled recast gauge. Its recast ability Cobalt Wall will boost its stats and inflict a slew of debuffs. If anyone is broken by the recast ability, it will follow up Pulse Fire which is a deadly AoE HP attack to entire party. In other words, if you don't get broken, there isn't a lot of HP attacks to watch out for. Overall, this isn't a very hard fight as long as you have units to tackle it. The real issue is managing the orb and the turn count. Now let's proceed with the boss mechanics proper. Like the previous Lupania Plus fights, the boss will gain big stats boosts, brave damage, and brave gain reduction auras when you deplete their HP to a certain threshold. The threshold's trigger for this fight is at the start of the fight, 79% HP threshold and 49% HP thresholds. At the start of the fight, it will boost its defense stats by 200%. At 79% HP threshold, it will further boost its defense stats to 300%. The maximum brave damage reduction auras is 90%. The maximum brave gain reduction auras are 70%. To handle against the Brave Reduction Auras, you can use Brave Damage Up calls like Jack, Sephiroth, or bring a support that have Brave Damage Up like Lena. Alternatively, you can also use the Enchant and Imperil strategy to hit the enemies for elemental weakness damage. Machina the featured BT unit has a very strong rework and finish up the fight if you have him fully geared. His S2 has been upgraded to provide him with 100% instant break utility. Snow the featured banner unit will make the fight easy thanks to his damage mitigation and constant ice elemental counters. He can even solo this fight on his own when he gets his first realization in the future. Now, I will be covering the boss key mechanics in detail. The recast ability Cobalt Wall has two ending scenarios. It will differ whether your party members get broken by it. The boss starts off the fight with 50% of its recast gauge filled. The recast is an AoE brave attack that boosts all stats by 30% while inflicting 5 non-frame debuffs. Both stat boosts and debuffs last for 3 turns. If anyone got broken by the recast, the boss will follow up with Pulse Fire AoE HP attack. This attack can be a game ender if you don't have mitigation against it. Have a lock tank that could battery and provide brave damage reduction is very valuable here. Before the boss uses its recast ability, the boss has a tendency to use collide, a single target brave attack that dispel non-framed buffs. Remember to keep your party brave high before you take any incoming recast brave attack. Do note that the boss could follow up with foot stomp, a single target HP attack off its recast ability if it have considerable amount of brave. Next, the other key mechanic that you need to watch is the Forge Blade. The Forge Blade will allow the boss to summon a Centurion Blade. The first Forge Blade trigger is when the Tyrant's boss HP deplete to 89%. The Centurion Blade has two key attacks, Triple Cut and Triple Cut Plus. Triple Cut is a single brave attack that moves the targeted unit after the blade's turn. Triple Cut Plus is the HP variant of the Triple Cut where the blade will self-destruct after using it. Don't get broken by it or the targeted unit will face heavy HP damage. This will trigger the disarmament phase. The disarmament phase will trigger on two conditions. 1. After the blade uses Triple Cut Plus. 2. When the blade HP has been depleted to zero. The Tyrant will use Forge Blade to summon a new blade after its fourth turn has ended. In order to end the fight, you need to finish off the blade as well. Don't waste too much of your skills on the blade. Focus your damage primarily on the main boss. Do remember that the turn count is a tight 55 turns. 
Now I have reached the last slide of my boss guide presentation. There are two common approaches used by JP players when the event is initially released in JP version. The first approach is the hit and counter approach. The orb condition is quite tight, you probably give a boss a few turns so you can build up the orbs a safety margin before you initiate your damage phase. If you deploy any ice elemental units like Vaughn, their attacks will freeze the orb, this will buy you extra turns to handle the orb. As mentioned previously, avoid get broken by the recast at all costs. I have list down some examples of damage mitigation options that you can look into. To do boss no turns, you need ice enchant for the party. However, doing ice enchant will only freeze the orb. The orb will be updicted in burst and summon phase provided you can constantly do ice elemental damage. Shiva summon is the ideal summon for the fight as well since it will enchant all non-elemental damage with ice while you are in the summon phase. Ice party enchanters are very valuable for boss no turns. Karaseme enables party ice enchant with his LD. Celis enchants the party with ice by just upkeep her runic buff with her S2. Onion Knight need to use his A to constantly enable ice enchant. Do note that elemental attacks won't get their elements overridden by ice enchant call. For example, Bart's LD is wind elemental, you can't overwrite its elemental properties with ice enchant call. I have list down the infamous cheese combos with the setup. If you are using ice enchant call, make sure you don't give call holder a turn. Karaseme LDCA only last for 3 turns. Once it is good, you need to finish the fight before the orb explodes. I have come to the end of my boss guide presentation. Hopefully you find it useful. If you like the video, please give a like. Please subscribe to my channel for future gaming content. Good luck for the fight tomorrow. Bye.